All right, so just give it a quick shuffle, just to be sure they're completely mixed up. And you know, for this routine, all I'm going to use is only uh, four cards. And to make it easier, I'm going to choose the kings this time. It doesn't really matter, it can be any other four of a kind. And um, I just need them alternating in colors. I have the red, black, and red and black, okay? So just follow the kings because I only have uh, four cards. One, two, three, and four. Now, I'm gonna put two kings face up and two face down. And by snapping the fingers, they all go one way, okay? Now, to be sure, I'm gonna try once again. Two face up, two face down. By snapping the fingers, they actually go one way. Now, you know, I can do this actually all day long and it doesn't matter. The secret is because I'm snapping the fingers, they all go one way. But what happens if I twist it instead and snap it? Now I have an ace. And to be sure it's not just coincidence. Twist it again and snap it. And I have another ace. Well, you know, uh, the reason is because I actually have four aces. One, two, three, and four. And that's it. Now at this point, if you want, you can go into any other routine. Okay, the setup is not really that complicated. You need a four aces on top. Notice I have the ace of spades and the red aces in the middle. Usually, whatever you decide, the, the same colors should be in the middle, the other ones at the end for a final production so that they can be interlaced in color. And that's pretty much it for a setup. Now, as you notice, the deck is usually a little bit bent up, not too much. That's a natural bending, as usual. And that's gonna help me because later on in the performance, I need to do a pinky break uh, under the four aces. So by just pushing right in this corner, it's gonna open right here, and it's gonna be much easier to do a pinky break under the four aces. Or you can just do a pinky count. But make sure it's not too much the opposite bendings. Otherwise, it's gonna expose the face up cards now after you finish the setup just look for the kings in front of the spectator and don't put them on the table just adjust them so you can later on be careful not to go way further down don't put them on the table because later on i need to put them back on the deck of playing cards so it's not gonna make sense just move it right under and then when you peel them off, be careful not to go way further down, just the top four cards. And right here at this point, I need to be ready for a pinky break. And you know, you need to delay. This is why I say that I need the cards to be color interlaced. So it gives me a little bit more time, you know, to do a pinky count. I take one, two, the third one is gonna be inja and the fourth one, um, normal. And the reason I'm in a third card is because when I flip over eight cards with the aces, four kings and four aces, I'm gonna push down the, the angel card so I can drop two kings over here and keep two kings up here. So I flip over the deck and it's gonna help me later on at the end of the performance. Now, at this point, I have the two kings over here and the four aces on top. And I need to move these two kings from the bottom to the top. Now, as you notice, also in the performance, I flash the two bottom cards, the kings. The reason is because, you know, just in case the spectator, they believe you are actually uh, taking extra cards. So, I don't say anything anyway about the kings. So I just say I have four cards and I count one, two, three, and four. It, this is not an Emsley count, but it's kind of similar. I'm gonna do it once again 
put a king's face up so you can follow it better I do a block push off okay which means I'm trying to push everything but the bottom card I'm keeping the bottom card then I'm gonna reload it and put it back down here and then I'm gonna take the block as two three and four okay so with a king's face down I take just the bottom card and then peel off the bottom from this uh, other package reload it as two three and four anyway I have that two kings right on top and then as you notice in the performance I take one at the bottom and I leave one on top I try to show two kings face down as well and you have to be also careful not to uh, spread more than the top two cards now when you flip the package face down do an Ensley count I take one I'm exaggerating so you can follow it two three and four now you don't know how to do the Ensley count just go to this video full note and it's gonna take you to the uh, tutorial for Ensley count and this is gonna be the same thing over and over after you do the Ensley count the two kings they always are gonna end up uh, on top of the pack okay one at the bottom one on top and snap the fingers and do an name flick on and let me put it face up so you can follow it better one two three and four I'm actually reloading the first card that I'm taking and then once again since I already have the top two kings I don't do this routine more than three times it's gonna be too much and not only is it gonna be boring but people start getting some sort of an idea or discerning the method uh, up to a point you know three times is more than enough as you see in the performance and then I do it once again dime silicon one reloading the first card, two, the whole block, the four aces, three, the bottom card, and this is the four, the top card. As you can see, I can repeat this all day long, and they always, as you notice, they will end up on top. Anyway, uh, I always try to snap it as, you know, any justification, any gesture, why the flipping action, why they all are one way. Now, if you want to change it to another card, I'm trying to do a little different. This time I'm twisting it, you know, another justification. And by snap it, now they are aces. And again, I'm still doing an Emsley count. Move it to the top, face down. And the same thing, spin it, snap it, and do again an Emsley count, reloading the top card. As you can see, I'm exaggerating. And the ace, I leave it agile. So I can move it to the top. Okay, and that's it. At this point, I have the two kings right in the middle. And I'm trying to take the bottom card with the index and then the bottom once again with a middle finger. Bottom, bottom. And with a thumb, I take the top card. Okay. Now always try to keep moving your hand because I have the two kings right under the last ace and because it is kind of thick, you know, compared to these other aces you don't want to leave it there in the cards because they can see the thickness of the top card so instead when I take the bottom card and the bottom and then the top I keep swinging one, two, three and four so I had a two kings right under the four aces and I just leave them right there and that's all for our routine now as I also say in the performance you can also use the aces for any other routine before you peel off the, the last ace make sure you swing down so they don't see the king and that's it 
you can go to any other routine with ISIS. And if you want, give it to the spectators so they can inspect them. And or you can just do a half pass, or any pass you want to do. Because I had the two kings on top, the two kings on the bottom. So after doing the um, half pass, for example, I'm putting the four aces together in the middle of the deck. You can spread and show the spectator the kings end up in the middle of the deck. 